Click the link in the description to go to aoa.com, the best place to buy Skull and Bones Silver Cheap. Use code DTG for 3% off at checkout. Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Skull and Bones, and I'm going to be doing a very serious Sam book guide. So basically, uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for me to dive more in depth with the bark and really figure out where that ship shines and all its strengths and weaknesses. Unfortunately, I haven't been. Uh, I just, I tried, I switched to it a little bit, and I was playing with it, and I was like, yeah, I, I like this ship, it's better, because, uh, the brig was my favorite, but the problem with the brig is it goes only eight knots sailing into the wind, and so the bark has an advantage over it when you're sailing into the wind, and it's not that much slower when you're sailing with the wind, so, uh, it's definitely good for that. Uh, that being said, I also wanted to experiment with a DPS ship and see just how good I could get it, and I knew the sandbook had the most potential there, so that's the one I've been playing with, and I think I've isolated the best combination of furniture, weapons, and strategies with that ship, uh, because I tried a lot of stuff. I've, I've tested out basically everything I could, every combination, all the different, you know, because everybody's got their opinion for what the best weapons are, or, you know, what the best combination is, and I've gone through quite a few of them, and I think I finally found it. It is a hell of a ship, and so I'll be showing you all of that, and then I'll show you some uh, combat footage that uh, I've already recorded while I was testing this most recent build. Actually, it's not even this most recent build. This most recent build has a slight improvement over the combat footage I'll show. But the uh, the combat gameplay, the way that I engage with the ship, is the same way because the the guns that I have on the uh, the fore and aft, I change between the footage I have and between the build I'm, I'm going to be showing you. But the build I'm showing you just has a better option for them that I realized partway along. I was like, wait, why am I not using those ones? And uh, I was right, they are significantly better. So let's just dive on into it. And I guess I'll just start by clarifying. I don't know if I really have to do this, but uh, the Sam book is the, it's called the Pyromania it's the second to last ship now that the bark's been added the bark is what i would call the last ship that you can unlock because you have to get it through the through the seasonal pass so the sam book is the one that once you get to a high enough level to unlock this you can purchase the schematic from the black market in the helm for 5,000 pieces of eight once you've done that you can build it and so for most people it's kind of the last ship that you'll unlock at least currently in the game uh there's no nothing too ridiculous to build it you know it's it's a relatively easy ship to get as long as you know the process i'm not saying it's quick but you can do it without too much crazy extra work. Uh, and it's got a lot going for it. The main thing is that Scorched Perk. Remember, we're, we're trying to work towards the uh, the Ablaze effect being activated, which will deal 5,000 burning damage uh, to that ship. And it also deals that damage within a 150 meter radius, radius, which is what makes this build so effective in the way that I've been using it. Uh, every time we can trigger that Ablaze effect, we're obviously doing 5,000 damage to that ship and all the ships that close to it. So sometimes all it takes is like two or three volumes of fire from your ship and you can wipe out an entire convoy using this now mind you i'm not talking about an elite convoy but like a regular trade convoy or if you're doing a uh supply run for the black uh for the helm you can oftentimes take out an entire one like that it's it's very very effective there and obviously because it is it's also effective against elite convoys there's only one weakness to this build i guess one and a half because we already know about the speed but we'll get to the one weakness when i'm showing you the loadout so uh yes it is a sandbuck build i just wanted to touch on again Again, on what the sandbuck is. So as far as the weapons and everything on this build, I uh, I mean just starting off with armor, I currently have the Black Prince armor equipped on it. Uh, I only have one of these because, you know, that's all I've got. Uh, but that's the one that I have on it. I had the Royal Custodian on there and that obviously also works rather fine. I know that now that people are able to get their hands on more of the uh, Beast Tooth, I think it is. Uh, they're getting their hands on the Ouroboros, and everyone's telling me that that one is just the bee's knees for ship armor. I don't have that one yet, though, so uh, so I just have the Black Prince on there. But you're going to want as best of armor as possible because the only major weakness on the Sandbook, uh, and it is a big one, is that it has a very weak hull. You cannot take much damage in this ship. That's one of the reasons why whenever you see someone sitting parked with this ship, either they've already taken out all the threats and they're just trying to make sure they can be as accurate as possible, or they don't know what they're doing because this ship goes down fast and unfortunately with this build I to maximize damage I wasn't able to put in a lot of the furniture that I like having on my ships for extra survivability so it's a glass cannon so you want to make sure you have the absolute best armor possible on your ship so that's where we start with this build if you don't have good armor then this build is going to be tough for you then moving on to our uh, auxiliary weapon which is not normally where I start but it will be in this case um you want mortar and it realistically the only one that I see fit for it is the Leopold 3 and that's 
that's the one I have on there. Now, obviously, if you haven't unlocked the Leopold 3 yet or you can't use that yet, either of the other Leopold ones are going to be your next best bet because we want that we want that high mortar damage, but what we mostly want is the fact that it deals all that extra fire damage. I mean, it also has the advantage of doing a blast radius and having flooding damage, so the Leopold 3 is just overall one of the best auxiliary weapons in the game. From what I understand, the Laflu is also pretty good, but I don't have that one. But I, it wouldn't work for this build anyway, because what we really, 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 really need is, of course, that extra fire damage and the blast and everything. So the Leopold 3 is the auxiliary weapon for this build. Then our forward and rear, our, our bow and stern weapons, are the fire bomb. Bombard 3. Now this is the part that changed. Like I said, in my combat footage you'll see I don't have the Bombards on here. I have a Fire Long Gun 3 on the bow and a Zamzama 2 on the stern. Uh, a, because I was, you know, working with the weapons I had and so those were weapons that I had and they helped with the fire damage and everything. And I do like having Long Guns on the bow. It wasn't until I had played with that for a while and I realized that the damage output potential and range flexibility of the Fire Bombard 3 is significantly higher than both of those weapons especially when you consider what our main weapons are on this ship, and we don't want to limit ourselves too much. So that's why I put the Fire Bombard 3 for our front and back weapons. I definitely recommend you do that, because it gives you the range that this build realistically just doesn't have any other way. So, uh, like I said, because you can't take much damage, this build is about dealing as much damage as quick as possible, because you don't want to be taking enemy fire. So definitely want our Fire Bombard 3s on the front and the back. And then the the, the meat of this build is, of course, our Zamzama 3 Demi Cannons on our port and starboard sides. So this is a shotgun build, because if you know anything about the demi cannons, you know that they fire just a ton. They fire all your cannons at once in this big shotgun blast. They deal a ton of damage, but only up close. Now, I just recently did a fort siege to test this ship to make sure that it, it's not totally useless in a siege, and it's not. It works perfectly fine. You do have to be close to the fort fortifications to take them out using these uh, Zamzama cannons, but you can deal plenty of damage plenty quickly, and you can supplement that with your uh, mortars and your bombards to very very effectively take out fort defenses and of course it's great against ships which is what this build is made for so like i said port and starboard weapons are your zamzama 3 your uh bow and stern weapons are going to be the fire bombard 3 and then of course we want our leopold 3 for our auxiliary weapon and then whatever the best uh armor you can possibly get i was gonna try doing this in the carpenter but then i realized wait why am i dicking around in there it's hard for me to remember i'll just go into my ship and show you in here so uh for the furniture on this ship the way that i have it set up that i found works the best for this is just like I've, i'll show you here so first one is our it's our major furniture and the one that i think works best for this build is going to be the scrapper station now i went through a couple of the different ones and there's obviously good choices to make here throughout but the scrapper station restores 8,000 hull health after a crew attack this ship because of the fact that we're using those demi cannons on the side, you do have to get close to the enemy. So you're always going to be up close. The closer you are, the more damage you can deal. Uh, and it, uh, honestly, you, I, I don't know if you take any more damage, because yes, you get hit by more broadsides, but you get hit by, hit by less mortar attacks. So it, I feel like it balances out fairly well, at least, you know, for the most part. And so this one, every single time you initiate a, a crew attack, which could be, in this case, it's, you know, throwing the, the fire bottles at them, you get that 8,000 hull health back, and you can do that over and over again as quickly as you can take down their health to the point where you can do another crew attack you can do it again and so it helps with the survivability and like i said since this is a more fragile ship with a weaker hull it definitely comes in handy a lot this one has saved me many many times so i i think despite the fact that there are arguments to make for a lot of the other major furniture in this one the scrapper station is the way to go for furniture slot slot two i went with port powder kegs one that increases our port weapon damage by 10 percent so on our port side anything we're firing off there we get boom instant 10 percent boost and like i said we're going to be maxing damage on this build, so you're going to see how we're going to stack things on top of each other. Our third one is the starboard damage. Like I said, our broadsides are our main weapons on this one. If you've got the presence of mind to make sure that you're always facing the enemy with one side, I can see not using both of these. You know, you could just prioritize one side of your ship as your main broadside, and then maybe you could add something like a maintenance forge to help with your survivability or, you know, uh, help with your hull planking or something like that. But the way that I like to use the ship is I like to sail right down the middle of them, and I like to give it give it to him from both barrels so i'll i'll hit him with the mortar strike i'll hit him with my bombards and then i'll i'll sail in there and i'll broadside one ship and i'll broadside another ship and that will trigger the ablaze effect and i normally take out an entire group of ships with just that attack oftentimes before they can even fire back 
So I like to go on both sides, but if you have the presence of mind to make sure you're always facing with the right side, then you can do just one of these and you can make the ship more survivable. Uh, for our fourth furniture, we have the Demi Cannon Furnace 1, so that increases the maximum range of our Demi Cannons by 10%. Uh, this one's not a damage one, but because of how, how short the range is on these cannons, I that 10% makes a big difference. Because you go from just spitting glitter at the enemy at, you know, your max distance to actually having a little bit more to reach out and hit them with. So I know it's only 10%, but it makes a big difference in my opinion. And then our fifth one is the Demi Cannon Works one. So increases the elemental damage multiplier of Demi Cannons by 19%. That one, again, is huge. We're using fire-based Demi Cannons, so we're maxing, we're, we're increasing our damage on both sides with those powder kegs for port and starboard, and now we're increasing that damage multiplier uh, for the elemental damage that they do, and they do a lot. So this build right here with these weapons that I've showed you, uh, and these furniture is devastating. It absolutely slaps in combat. So like I said, I'm showing you, we got Fire Bombard 3 on the front, Zamzama 3 on the sides. So we have, you know, the threes on both of those. Uh, Fire Bombard 3 on the rear, and of course, our Leopold 3 as our auxiliary weapon. And then, uh, like I said, for armor, I have the Black Prince installed, the Wailing Ward, or the Royal Custodian, which as you may be able to tell is quite easy to get your hands on. Uh, those are also great options. Black Prince just gives you a, a slight edge. It works better in testing. I tested both of these. Like I said, I started the build using the Royal Custodian. Well, not started, but started the refinement stage using the Royal Custodian. And then I switched over to the Black Prince and the survivability was much higher with the Black Prince. Plus, I think uh, with the Black Prince, you get a pretty sweet uh, fortifying boost right after you have used a repair kit, which you're going to be doing a lot in the ship, and so that's nice. So, uh, yeah, this build is a serious, serious build. It it slaps in combat. Out of all the DPS builds that I've tried with any ships, this one is by far the highest outcome that I've been able to come up with. And like I said, I'm just gonna, you can watch it for as long as you want. I'm gonna put some extra combat footage right here because I'm done with the video now. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this was helpful if you're going for a DPS build. If you have any tips to tweak this one, I don't want to change out the weapons. People are always like, use Sea Fire. I don't like Sea Fire. It's way too limited of a weapon. It more often than not, you're actually not hitting your max potential damage that the weapon advertises with that one because it's not as reliable. And of course, it's an incredibly short range weapon. So I don't like using the Sea Fire. But if you've got any other tweaks, maybe a furniture change that you're like, oh no, it's got a much better dynamic. Try it this way. Let me know down in the comment section. But as of right now, this is by far the best DPS build that I've attempted. So that's all for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the combat footage.
Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.